The Hoosier football team had a active offseason, tons of transfers in and out of the program, uh, players declaring for the draft, recruits coming in. With everything kind of settled down, we're going to set the table for what uh, some of the positions look like as we start to head into a new season. Also going to talk about the MLS Super Draft where Roman Celentano went number two overall. Give you some uh, some updates on some players coming back from injury in the NBA as well. Some former Hoosiers getting back on the court. Ton to talk about in today's packed episode. You are locked on Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, guys? It is Wednesday, January 12th. This is Locked On Hoosiers, your daily one-stop shop for all IU athletics news, analysis, recaps, previews, everything you guys could need. We have it for you. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rood. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers part of your day and your first listen every day. Just a reminder, we are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, which we're going to talk a little bit more about here in a second. Uh, But stop on by if you haven't already. Throw us a subscription on YouTube. You can watch the podcast every day as well. Uh, Today's show is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to netsuite.com slash locked for special new year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. As always, you can subscribe to Locked on Hoosiers wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers and on Instagram at Locked on Hoosiers. Uh, A couple programming notes before we jump into this. I mentioned that we were going to be talking to Locked on Mizzou today about new quarterback Connor Bazelik. Uh It was actually that host's birthday today. We had a scheduling mix-up, uh, so I let him go celebrate his birthday. I'm not going to make anybody uh, podcast, especially about somebody transferring away from your program on your birthday. So we will. Uh, we still plan on talking to him. Uh, it might happen later this week. It might be into next week, but we will still have that, get some uh, information on him. Uh, The other thing, I mentioned the YouTube. We're going to start something new, uh, try to premiere the YouTube videos every day, same time, uh, so you guys can all join in, have a discussion with one another. So starting 7 a.m. every day, I know that's early, but uh, I know a lot of you are up getting ready for work. Maybe you're at work by then, getting ready for school, whatever it may be. Uh, 7 a.m., we're going to start previewing or uh, premiering, I should say, these episodes over on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed over there. You guys can have it, head over there and chat with other Hoosier fans about that day's episode or about whatever you guys want to talk about. So uh, head on over to Locked on Hoosiers on YouTube. Give us a subscription over there. So let's jump into this. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this was going to be part of the podcast, even with talking to Locked on Mizu, John Miller over there. Uh, but we're going to kind of stretch it out a little bit because, honestly, I had to do this when it came to the IU football roster, and that's just figure out who's still there, who's there, who isn't there. So much changed over the off season. I mean, really, it's only been a couple months since the season has ended. There's been so much shakeup within this team, not even just the players, the coaches that we've seen. Obviously, we've discussed new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, new defensive line coach, who is also the defensive coordinator, tons of new players, uh, a lot of prominent guys leaving, a lot of prominent guys returning. And then we have that top 25 recruiting class joining as well. So much shakeup. We're once the summer comes and it's really focusing on football, we will eventually talk about, um, the football team position by position, things like that. Right now, we're just going to kind of give you a a rough look at what each position looks like, who's there, who isn't there, who left, things like that. We're going to start on the offensive end, start at quarterback, the most important position. I honestly think 
right now on January 12th, as I record this, this is a four horse race for the starting quarterback position. You have Connor Bazelik, the transfer from Missouri that we mentioned uh, earlier this week on Monday's episode that we've mentioned today that we're going to talk to Locked on Mizzou about. Uh, I would almost pin him as the favorite right now heading into spring practice, though. Jack Tuttle is going to be right behind him when he's healthy. Uh, he was behind Penix, though. Penix obviously transferred away. He's going to Washington. But uh, this is a a position that is wide open because you also have uh, Donovan McCauley, who took a lot of snaps this season. Mixed reviews. Uh, you could see the potential. You could see also why he was third string. Uh, would have been fourth string if not to an injury to Dexter Williams, who I also think is going to factor into this. Uh, Williams is another guy who uh, the program, the coaches have high hopes for. Um, he was a redshirt freshman, suffered an injury during fall practice. So if not for that injury, he would have been out there before Donovan McCauley would have been. So earnestly, you could make some type of case for all four of these guys, I think. It's going to be a lot of shakeup. I, I honestly don't know that I could pick right now. I think Connor Basic has a slight edge just because – he did it in a in the SEC as a young player, uh, but Jack Tuttle is going to be right there. Depending on how much Donovan McCauley progresses, uh, he could very much find himself in the mix as well. Uh, running back, we've talked about another position that is totally reshaped. Uh, you lose a lot. They were losing a lot during the season. St uh, Stephen Carr is graduating. Samson James transferred. Um, a number of guys left the program. During the season, uh, you were down to walk-ons by the end of the year, and even some of those have left. Uh, but ultimately, this is going to be Sean Shiver's position. We talked to Locked On Auburn a couple weeks ago about him. Uh, he's going to be the guy. Uh, he's a smaller player, 5'7", 190 pounds, powerful player, though. He's going to see a lot of time. Gabran Payne is one of the top recruits in this recruiting class, coming from the the strong program LaSalle in Cincinnati. He's going to see some time, I think, right away. Uh, David Ellis as well, somebody that uh, you might have forgot about. He was injured last season. He's a third down back, kind of a specialist in that regard. So uh, he is going to be back, and um, he is going to play a role in this team as well. So uh, last couple positions, wide receiver, tight end totally overhauled, especially the wide receiver position. You lost a, a lot of guys. Ty Freifogel is gone. I will, I'll resist the joke about him not even really showing up all that much this season. It was a frustrating year for him. Certainly not what he envisioned when he came back. Um, you have other guys that have left. Cam Buckley has left. Um, I'm sure throughout all this, I'm going to forget a lot of names that have left. Uh, because there's been so many people that, uh, that have entered the transfer portal. Jacoby Hewitt also entered the transfer portal. Um, DJ Matthews, I think, has one more year of eligibility left. I'm guessing as much as anybody else right now, um, but I believe he potentially has one more season left. He's tweeting a lot about Indiana football, even if he doesn't, so we have a a fan for life there, even if he only played a handful of games. Outside of that, though, it's going to get really interesting because there's not a ton of talent there, and this wasn't a, a position that was predict uh, particularly productive. Uh, tongue twister there last season. So there's a lot of room for reps. Um, Emory Simmons, I think, is going to – be a big factor, the transfer from UNC. Cam Camper, the transfer from Trinity Valley. Omar Cooper from Lawrence North, uh, one of the top recruits in that class. Um, there really isn't. Jacquez Smith is a, was a freshman this season. Uh, Malachi Holt Bennett as well. So there's going to be a lot of new faces catching passes as well as Peyton Hendershot is gone. A.J. Barner, though, is back. Um, as well as Matt Bjornson, those two played a fair amount. Um, Bjornson could come back one more year, um, but those two played a decent amount last season, but 
nobody's going to have bigger shoes to fill than whoever steps in at the tight end position because Peyton Hendershot earnestly is one of the best tight ends, probably the best tight end in Indiana football history. So um, you also have a recruit, Brody Foley, who might factor into it. I think there's enough incumbents there that Barner and Bjornsson will be the two guys. Though. Uh, let, we'll, we're going to jump to the defensive end. Not quite as much turnover. A little more talent coming back on that side of the ball. Um, NetSuite, though, is the sponsor of today's episode. And this is it, guys. The putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. Head to netsuite.com slash locked for this special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash locked. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Thank you guys for gutting out yesterday's episode where I'm sure I sounded awful. A little bit better today. Have a little bit more energy. Trying to cut out all the coughing for you guys so I don't sound like a a chain smoker on these podcasts and give you some ASMR you do not want. This defense, as I said, doesn't have quite as many people coming out. Uh, but it is certainly quality over quantity that it is losing. Defensive line is an interesting one because um, this Hoosier defensive line was hot and cold. Beginning of the year, it was all about Ryder Anderson, Weston Kramer, the big impacts they were making, and both kind of faded away as the defense struggled more and more as the season went along. Um, So both of those guys are gone. They were transfers. Had one year of eligibility left. This program really kind of loaded up on uh, last season when it came to some of the transfers. Cannot blame them. We had as many expectations as they did. So you can see why they did it. But a couple of names will be back next season that uh, you will recall. You have Jaron Handy, who's been around a little bit. Uh, He'll be back next season. Um, But this defensive line, it's a lot of names, a lot of guys that you might have heard of, but just guys that haven't really produced a ton. Um, James Head Jr. is a senior. He could potentially be back. Um, Same with Demarcus Elliott. Christian Love is a redshirt junior. Um, You have a couple of transfers that are going to make some type of impact as well, potentially. Miles Jackson might. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what his position is going to be, whether it's defensive line, whether it's a linebacker. uh, He could potentially factor into um, that defensive line. You have Ladarius Cox. You have Patrick Lewis Jr., J.H. Tevis, all transfers. Vincent Sneed is a recruit. Um, you got to be pretty special to step in as a true freshman on a defensive line in the Big Ten. So I don't know how much the recruits will do, but uh, some of the transfers will. There's a lot of names on this defensive line that could potentially do something. It's just a matter of if they will, if they, who progresses, who will step up. Linebacking core is obviously uh, going to have to replace Micah McFadden. I mentioned offensively, no one was going to have bigger shoes to fill than the tight ends. Nobody in the team is going to have a bigger shoe to fill than this linebacking core. Cam Jones could potentially come back um, from what I have read. It's uncertain if he will. Um, he, I'm not expecting it. I think both him and um, uh, Micah McFadden, excuse me, both 
would be gone, but Cam Jones could potentially come back. He hasn't given an update on his decision. If he comes back, it's absolutely massive and goes a, such a long way in helping us um, replace that production because you're only replacing one really good linebacker instead of two. McFadden got a, obviously all of the credit. He deserved all of it. He was incredible. Cam Jones was really good this season too. So um, only having to replace one of those guys, kind of staggering them would help. Hoosiers have been active bringing in linebackers too. Bradley Jennings Jr. Um, is going to come in from Miami. We mentioned Jared Casey recently from Kentucky. But the prize recruit of this recruiting class is Deshaun McCullough, a linebacker from Bloomington South. He, I would think, is going to come in right away and play. Uh, he's been in All-American games. He's been around as a high school standout. Uh, he's enrolling early. I think he's going to factor into this defense right away, and I would not be surprised if he's starting right away. He's I, he's really, really good. He's going to get all the chances to um, play at a, a very high level this season. I expect big things from him. Uh, as I said, this is a historic recruiting class, and he's the crown jewel of it. So it's going to be some expectations on him that maybe aren't typically there for an Indiana football recruit. Last position, just looking at the defensive uh, backs, the secondary as a whole, you don't lose a lot. Uh, Reese Taylor obviously left, went to Purdue. Marcelino Ball has graduated after a, a long time in the program. Uh, he has graduated. He has moved on. Raheem Lane is gone as well. Juwan Burgess uh, could potentially come back, I believe. Um, there's some key names that could be back, none more so than Taiwan Mullen, who is going to be the best player on this team coming into the season by far. There was already, I made the argument last preseason that he was the best player on this team. Um, and that was when we had high expectations for Penix, Freifogel. McFadden lived up to those expectations. He was the best player of, of the year. Um, but Taiwan Mullen had a frustrating season. I don't want to call it disappointing. He struggled early. I thought he was back to his old self in that Western Kentucky game, but that's where he suffered the injury, and he never really got back on the field. So I would categorize it more as frustrating than disappointing. Not mutually exclusive, though. If it was a frustrating season, it was also a disappointing season. Um, he'll be back. Jalen Williams will be back. Uh, those will be your top two cornerbacks. I think this position will be, uh, the best, uh, on the Hoosiers this season. Again, I thought it was last season. Not everybody lived up to the height, but still when they were healthy, this was a strong group. Um, you have some other names coming back. Noah Pierre, Devin Matthews, Josh Sanguinetti all had experience last season. Uh, some due to injury, uh, Devin Matthews was a starter. They'll all be back. And then again, another familiar name coming into that recruiting class, Travell Mullen, uh, younger brother of Taiwan. He'll be here next season. Don't know necessarily that he will be playing right away, but there is nobody better to learn from than Taiwan Mullen next season. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how much playing time he'll get. This is a deep group, though. I wouldn't expect many newcomers to get time right away. There's a reason nobody transferred into the secondary, uh, because this is a group that is going to have quite a bit of returning production, probably more so than any other position group uh, on the team next season. So thought that was it was helpful to me just to put it down on pen and paper, or I guess on keyboard and screen. Uh, just to see who is back, what the Hoosiers have, uh, what they might still need. Though I think the transfer portal is pretty much done and dusted for the most part. Might get a couple stragglers here, but uh, I don't imagine the Hoosiers are going to land very much more, if anything else, um, at least in the transfer portal. But we will see. Um, but nonetheless, it is going to be an interesting year next year with an entirely different looking Indiana Hoosiers team, which you kind of have to do after you go two and 10 with the expectations this team had. So uh, we will certainly 
much later in the future talk about the football team. That might be one of the final times we talk about them until the spring um, with coordinators hired, with the transfer portal done, signing day done. Uh, Just wanted to get a reset, and here we are. So after the break here in a moment, we're going to get you caught up on Roman Celentano, who was drafted on – uh, on oh, excuse me, I lost track of days on Tuesday. Uh, number two overall pick to FC Cincinnati. Uh, why that's a really interesting pick for them and what that means for his future. I've talked all this week, all last week, about the incredible app everyone needs to uh, download if they buy gas, and that is Get Upside. It's a simple app I've told you guys a lot about. Uh, all you do, all I did when I used it. Downloaded it to my phone, found the gas station I was going to, entered the promo code SCORE. That gas station had an offer for me of a certain amount of uh, cents off per gallon. I can't remember exactly. It was up to 50 cents when you use that promo code SCORE. Uh, 50 cents cash back per gallon. I claimed that offer, drove to the gas station, checked in, filled up the gas tank, uh, They told me it would be in my bank account in 48 to 72 hours. Um, And it was in my bank, or excuse me, in my account on the app in 24 hours. Now, it is simple to transfer that money to your bank account, to your PayPal, to a gift card, whatever it may be. Uh, This is just a really easy app to use, guys. Everybody's going to buy gas. Um, We complain about the gas prices all the time. So just download this app and you're buying. Uh, cheaper gas. You're getting cash back on something you have to buy anyway. It's frustrating. You have to buy gas no matter how expensive it is. So download this app. Use it today. There's no catch. I promise you I've used it. I got my money back. I could transfer it out at any time. Uh, Use that promo code SCORE for up to 50 cents uh, per gallon cash back on your first tank. That's promo code SCORE on the Get Upside app. Bet Online has you guys covered for all of your wagering action in 2022. They want to wish you a happy new betting year and a new year with a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit just by using the promo code locked on. Whether it's football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite. Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Mention that Roman Celentano was drafted on Tuesday. The mock drafts I saw, he was anywhere from three to maybe 12. Uh, there isn't the same type of scouting or anything like that for the MLS Super Draft as there is the other ones. A uh, little bit of surprise, at least to me and at least to the mock draft uh, mock drafts I saw. Salantano went number two overall to F- FC Cincinnati. He's only the third goalkeeper selected in the top two picks of the Super Draft ever, dating back to the mid-90s. Uh, your interesting connection to the Hoosiers here. Pat Noonan is the head coach of FC Cincinnati. Some of you might remember that name. He is a former Hoosier. He was named FC Cincinnati's head coach on December 14th, uh, about almost exactly a month ago of 2021. He had some stops in multiple places as an assistant uh, at the LA Galaxy with uh, the U.S. men's national team with Philadelphia. Finally lands his own gig, FC Cincinnati, really struggled. They're an expansion team in their first couple of seasons. Really, really struggled. Uh, They had Andrew Gutman, uh, another former Hoosier last season. I believe it was last season, maybe two seasons ago. Um, But they have, again, really struggled. There's an award given out, um, kind of a booby prize for the worst record. A wooden spoon is what it's called. They've won it the last two seasons. The only reason they didn't have the number one pick is because there's an expansion team for uh, Charlotte FC. They got the number one pick. FC Cincinnati had the worst record, got number two. Uh, Cincinnati now has four keepers on their roster, which is more than you typically carry. 
So I long term something has to happen uh to clear room. MLS soccer is not like your NBAs, your NFLs, where you get drafted and immediately make an impact. There's still a pretty big step up from college to professional. Maybe as a goalkeeper, uh, not as much, but um, there are a lot of people in front of Celentano. I think this was more of a long-term play to get him in, uh, make him the keeper of the future. I certainly would love to see him play right away. I don't know that that'll be the case uh, this upcoming season, but we will be tuning in just uh, just in case it is, uh, because him, Bezerra, both are going to be in the MLS next season. That is exciting. couple injury updates, NBA updates in general. Thomas Bryant is on track to make his season debut tonight uh, against the Magic. Uh, that's for the Wizards. He last played on January 9th, 2021. Uh, partially tore his ACL, has rehabbed for the better part a little over a year now. Wizards have a handful of centers uh, himself, Daniel Gafford, Montrez Harrell, but Bryant is a piece or was a piece of that kind of young core with the Wizards. I think he'll have a place on this team, uh, but he can be eased back into things a bit. I always love watching Thomas Bryant play, just the energy he has. So, Excited to see him back. Juwan Morgan, uh, we mentioned a couple weeks ago, was teaming up with OG and Anobi. That didn't last long. Wasn't a great performance with the Raptors. Uh, it was an odd situation where that it's kind of been the case across the NBA. The Raptors had to sign so many replacement players that they just kind of took their L's, waited for guys to get back, and didn't really retain anybody. Um so he went back to the G League, went back to the main Celtics, formerly the main Red Claws. On Monday, he recorded a double-double for the G League. So right now, I know the old saying in baseball is kind of a quadruple-A player, too good for triple-A, not good enough for the MLB. That kind of feels where Morgan's at right now. Probably a little too good for the G League, not quite good enough for the NBA. Don't know how much longer he'll stick around in the G League. Um, I wouldn't be shocked after this season. He might try it in the summer league one more time and then maybe go overseas and cash in on a payday while he still can. Cody Zeller uh, returned to action last Friday. He'd been out for almost a month. He had a knee injury that ruled him out, and then while he was injured with his knee, uh, he entered health and safety protocols. So um, he had been out for quite a while. He returned last Friday for the Blazers. Blazers are really struggling this year. Um, if Zeller can put together a nice string of games here, wouldn't be shocked if they tried to trade him to a contender. It's what he said he wanted to play for back uh, before the, the offseason, and then he went to a team that was not expected to contend. So I don't know if there's interest in him, but he's still talented when he's healthy, but that when he's healthy part has always been the big hang-up. Last player, again, someone I've been interested to see, Victor Oladipo, there's still really no update on him. He had the quad injury. Uh, he had surgery on it. And after that, Miami Heat and him have been just silence on his status. There's been a couple minor updates. He's shooting. He's traveling with the team. None of that's been anything close to a timeline. So I don't really know when he's going to come back, if he's going to come back this season. He's working out before games, but that doesn't mean a ton. Uh, it doesn't really set any kind of timetable. So the update on Oladipo is that there is no update, uh, but we will wait and see if there ever is one. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We're going to be back tomorrow with a crossover show with Locked on Hawkeyes to talk about that men's basketball game against Iowa on Thursday. So we'll get you all prepared for that. Now, for your second listen today, head on over to Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight. From Lee Sterling, appreciate all the love, the feedback. I want this to be a conversation, so follow us on Twitter, 
Leave a rating and review if you haven't already. Follow us on, uh, as I said, follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast. Um, Helps us out a ton, just subscribing, leaving that rating and review. Most importantly, though, guys, have a great Wednesday. And Elio, 